Turkey tail is one of the most popular consumer mushrooms due to some very interesting purported medicinal benefits. But did you know that you can likely forage for turkey tail close to you? Of course, in order to do that, you'll need to be able to positively identify it. Although turkey tail has many common lookalikes, once you know the details to pay attention to, it is very easy to distinguish it from them. In this video, we're gonna learn those details in order to positively identify turkey tail mushrooms. We're gonna be using a system called the Totally True Turkey Tail Test from Michael Kuo of mushroomexpert.com, a resource that I highly recommend. It'll be in the description below. For conciseness, for the rest of the video, I'm just gonna refer to that as the test. Be sure to watch until the end where we'll be taking the details that we learned from the test and using them as we compare turkey tail side by side with its lookalikes. First, let's talk about where turkey tail can be found. One of the great things about it is that it can be found all over the world, from North America to Europe and Asia, and I wouldn't be surprised if you could find it in the Southern Hemisphere as well. It is a sapro, which means you're gonna be finding it growing on decaying or dead wood or debris. I mainly find it in the fall season. All the way through winter and even early spring, it can be found, but typically the peak season is in the fall. So now that we know where we can find it and when we can find it, let's learn the test. Turkey tail is a polypore mushroom. If you turn it on its underside, it will have pores. And there are many other mushrooms that are similar in size and color to it. So that's why there's the need for this test. There are six steps in total. With each step, there will be a description. You'll be observing your specimen that you have. And if your specimen meets that description, then you can move on to the next step. But if it doesn't, then you have something other than turkey tail. Let's get started with step number one. We're gonna take our specimen and we're actually first gonna turn it onto its underside. And what we're looking for is a real pore surface. Are there actually pores there? And then we're gonna also go on to step number two, if there are, those pores should be very, very tiny. You should probably have to squint to see them or maybe even use a hand lens. If they're very large and obvious, then that is not turkey tail. One more thing, for a fresh specimen, those pores will be very white. With something that's dry or a little bit older, they are gonna start to turn brown, but if you have a fresh specimen, they will be the color white. For number three, we're taking our specimen, turning it back over to look at the cap. The cap should be definitively velvety, fuzzy, or having fine hairs. Number four, it should be colorful. If it's very dull, just gray or just white on the cap, then that is not turkey tail. Number five is that we should be seeing distinct coloration zones. These will kind of look like concentric rings coming out from the base of the mushroom. And we should be able to easily see one zone from another zone. If it's very concolorous, the same color all throughout, that is not turkey tail. Number six, the last one. Turkey tail, if fresh, should be thin and flexible, not thick and rigid. If it's not fresh, it's still going to be thin, but it'll maybe be a little bit less flexible. And one more additional one that I'll add has to do with size. So a single turkey tail tail is going to be roughly two to four centimeters across and one to three centimeters in length. If you have something that is very, very large, above eight centimeters, then that is definitely not going to be turkey tail. That'll be a different polypore or a different mushroom entirely. Oh, and one final bonus tip. Turkey tail has a distinct white zone along the margin of the cap. Using this detail will make it far easier to find from afar when you are looking for it out in the field. Okay, that is the full turkey tail test. So once again, if your specimen has met all six of those descriptions, then what you have is indeed a totally true turkey tail. If it didn't, then what you have is actually a lookalike. This is Sterium Australia. We're gonna find that it's gonna be very, very easy to tell apart. We're gonna go to step number one of the test. We're gonna take our Australia and turn it onto the underside. And what we'll see right away is that there is no pore surface. 
Styria Maestrea is completely smooth on the underside, so we can already distinguish it from true turkey tail. But I'll give you one more tip when you're out in the woods scouting for it, if you see it from afar and you see a mushroom that has margins or edges that are curved upward, that is more likely to be Styrium Australia, false turkey tail. True turkey tail is much more plain in the way that it grows. It doesn't curve upwards unless it's very, very dry. The second one is violet tooth polypore, trichaptum biforming. So once again, we're going to start with step number one and turn the specimen on its underside. Maybe you've already guessed by the name, but we will see teeth, not pores. Depending on the age of the mushroom, those teeth may be more or less pronounced. Also, the color if young will be violet, but as it ages, that color will only be found on the edges, if at all. And it will be more brown overall. But let's say that you are just starting out and you're having some difficulty telling the difference between teeth and pores. We'll also look at the cap. One thing that you'll notice is that the colors are typically far more muted than turkey tail, either a duller beige or even gray. Second, often the margin or edge of the cap will be a similar violet color to that found on the teeth. Remember, turkey tail has pores that are typically white when fresh, the cap is vibrant and has a white margin instead of a purple one. The last lookalike that we're going to compare, in my opinion, has the closest looking cap to turkey tail. However, with both of them, if we use step number one and we turn it on its underside, immediately we're going to see that it's definitely not. It will either have gills or a maze-like underside surface. Both of those are definitively different from turkey tail, so you should be able to tell the difference right away. Those are the three different lookalikes that I wanted to use for comparison for this video. Of course, there are many, many other ones. If there was one that I didn't cover that you can think of, then please write it in the comment section down below so that other people can find it and learn from it as well. If you would like to take this video with you out in the woods, I did make a photographic guide of the Totally True Turkey Tail test, which you can download for free via a link in the description below.